Hey everyone, welcome to the review of the XP Pen Artist 22 Pro, second generation. First of all, big thanks to XP Pen for providing this review unit so that I can show you guys how it looks and how it performs. So in this video, I'm going to unbox this. I'm going to show you the items included, then use this for a few weeks before I present to you my findings. This video is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. Or you can just use the timestamps that are provided to jump to different sections of this video. This pen display is actually one of several 22-inch pen displays from XP Pen. Currently, they are also selling the Artist 22 Pro, the Artist 22e Pro, the Artist 22R Pro. This table from my text review compares the differences between the different models. So the differences are whether or not there are any physical shortcut buttons, the color support, whether or not the pen is powered by battery or not, and whether there is any tilt sensitivity support. So it looks like everything is packed securely inside. These are the accessories and cables included in the box. An artist glove, quick start guide, microfiber cleaning cloth, warranty information, full-size HDMI to full-size HDMI cable, USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-C to USB Type-A cable, power adapter, and for some reason we have two power cables. On the order page on XP Pen's website, you get to choose the appropriate plug that's used in your country. And lastly, we have the very solid pen case or pen holder. So this is the stylus, the pen that's inside. And there are eight replacement nibs included and that in the middle is the nib remover. This is the XP Pen PA6 Stylus. It has pretty good build quality. It's very solid, has a nice weight to it. It's not powered by battery, so you don't have to worry about battery life running out. The pen is very comfortable to hold with its large rubber grip. The two side buttons are customizable. They have good feedback. The pen tip has some movement, but it's very minimal movement. The pen supports tilt sensitivity as well as slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Both ends of the pen case has this rubber, and with this particular end, you can actually use it as a pen stand. So this is the pen display. There are some instructions to tell you to peel off the protective film that's currently on the display. Let's peel this off very slowly. Let me just peel this layer first. Wow, this is very glossy. This surface is too glossy, too plasticky, and doesn't feel good when drawing, so it looks like I have to peel this off as well. Yep, so it looks like beneath this second protective film is the matte drawing surface. Now this is actually matte screen protector. The matte screen protector was cut and pasted really well that initially I thought this was matte glass. So all the corners are rounded off nicely, all the edges are beveled. The bezel is quite thick but not too thick. So you can see the design is very clean and simple. There are no physical shortcut buttons on either sides. At the top right of the pen display, we have the power button and buttons for the OSD manuals. That's the power light indicator. On the back, we can see the stand is already attached to the display. So this is the bottom of the display. Two large pieces of rubber feet here. And this is the latch that you can press down to move this part. There are two rollers here. The rubber feet will prevent the pen display from moving, while the roller will allow you to adjust this part very easily. You can adjust the stand so that the display is almost vertical without toppling over. You can deploy the stand at any angle, and this is the lowest angle possible. This is a very nice angle to work with, and the pen display at all positions very stable, doesn't move at all. I'm going to remove the stand behind to see if the display can be VESA mounted. It looks like you can VESA mount this. This is 10 by 10 centimeters. This area here is where you can find the ports and these protrusions here are for cable management. 
XP Pen has provided this little flap here that you can use to cover this part after you have connected the cables. That's the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full size HDMI, USB-C, and this is for the power. I've just connected the pen display to my laptop running Mac OS, and out of the box, the default colors, they look good. And the overall design of this pen display, it looks really nice. The build quality is also very solid. The RTX 22 can actually connect to a computer using just a USB-C cable for video and for data. If you use USB-C, then you don't have to use the HDMI and the USB Type-A cable. So you just need one single cable. Unfortunately, I do not have a computer with USB-C, so I can't test that functionality for you. But um, here I've shown you that you can actually output video through USB-C. This is my Samsung tablet. Let me show you what you can change with the OSD menu. So you can get the OSD from the buttons here. So you can adjust the brightness, contrast, gamma, color, temperature. Um, these are some settings I usually leave as default. So I'm just going to color calibrate this and measure the color support. I was able to get a maximum of 233 nits of brightness, which is not too far off from the advertised 250 nits. Color accuracy is pretty good. We get 100% sRGB, 82% NTSC, 84% Adobe RGB, and 91% P3. So this basically tells me this is an sRGB display, which is good for creating digital art, graphic design, basically for creating work that you want to put online. If you need even better color accuracy, then um, go for Adobe RGB displays, which are going to be significantly more expensive. 100% sRGB is great for most people and most uh, work purposes. The functionality for the Mac and Windows driver is essentially the same except for the Windows driver. There is this additional feature called Windows Ink, which you may have to turn on or off if pressure and tilt is not working as expected. So here for the work area, this is where you can actually calibrate the display. This is a pen and cursor calibration to make sure that the cursor will appear directly beneath the pen tip. And here under pen settings, we can customize the two side buttons on the pen. If you are using dual monitor setup, you will definitely need to customize one of the buttons here on the pen to make sure that you can switch the cursor from one display to another display because there are are no physical shortcut buttons on this pen display. So in order to switch the cursor, you have to use the button on the pen. The pressure curve can be adjusted by moving this dot around. I did experience some glitches or issues with the driver on Mac OS. By the way, the XP Pen driver can be used on Mac OS 10.10 .10 to 10.15, as well as the new Mac OS 11, which is running on the new Macs with the new M1 chip. It is very important to make sure you have uninstalled drivers from other brands or companies before you install the XP Pen driver. Otherwise, there could be glitches and issues. All right. Um, some of the issues I have with the Mac OS driver would be um, the driver does not launch automatically after installation. So when I restart the system, the pen actually doesn't work until I launch the driver. Thankfully, the workaround is really simple. You just have to click on the icon on the dock and choose open at login. Now, if you don't want to see this window when the driver launches, you can actually go into system preferences under users and groups, lock in item at the tablet driver using this plus icon here, and then check mark hide. So next time you start Mac OS, it will launch the app and it will hide it in the background. Another issue I have with the Mac driver is with Adobe Illustrator, pressure sensitivity doesn't work. So let's take a look here. By default, after installing the Mac driver, all these options here will be grayed out. You only have fixed and random. So the reason why I have all this option is because I have used my workaround 
which is basically installing the Wacom Intuos driver. And after I restarted the system, all these options are available now to me. Thankfully, with the Windows driver, we don't have the issues that we saw with the Mac driver. Pressure sensitivity works well with Adobe Illustrator here, no workaround needed. But there are issues with Windows Ink. So for example, with Photoshop, Windows Ink is now turned off and we don't have pressure sensitivity here. So let me turn on Windows Ink and now we have pressure sensitivity. By the way, the lag, the input lag or latency is due to my computer. Let me switch over to Medibank Paint Pro. With this app, Windows Ink needs to be turned off. Notice as I tap on the display, most of the time I don't get any dots. The other problem is the lines are a bit jittery. And the third problem is there is this split second delay when I draw. So for this line, I actually drew from here to here. I want to join the lines, but because of the split second delay, there is a gap there. Now that I'm zoomed in, it seems to be easier to draw, but we still see that gap there. I've just turned off Windows Ink and now I can draw dots very easily by tapping on the display without any issues. The lines are also smoother, significantly smoother, and I can join the lines without the gap at the start of the line. So if tilt and pressure is not working with drawing software on Windows, this is usually the problem, Windows Ink. This display is not laminated, but the gap between the drawing surface and the LCD beneath, it's very small. The reason why you can see the gap right now between the line and the pen tip is because my camera is pointing from the side. This is what you will see when you work from the front. It will look as if the line is coming from beneath the pen tip. There is no parallax. There is latency though. So you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip as I draw faster. Cursor tracking is pretty accurate. The cursor is almost always directly beneath the pen tip. I say almost because at the extreme edges, I can see the cursor stray away from the pen tip by a few pixels, maybe two to three pixels. The cursor straying a few pixels away from the pen tip at the extreme edges is actually not too bad. The main takeaway point here is I am still able to click all these icons at the edges without any problems. I'm also able to grab the scroll bar here all the time, 100% without any misses. With tilt sensitivity, now you can see it's working. The cursor is following the direction of the pen. However, the tilt will stop working when the pen is about one inch away from the edge. So now you can see the cursor is about 45 degrees. And as I move towards the edge, you can see it becomes vertical. Even if it's horizontal like this, once it's near the edge, it becomes vertical. This behavior happens along the four edges. So if you are someone who draws near the extreme edges, then this is definitely going to affect your work. But if you actually have palettes on the side, the menu at the top, taskbar at the bottom, or even the dock at the bottom, and you're just working here, then the tilt will work as per normal. The tilt sensitivity, by the way, works quite well. So it's very sensitive. You can have tilt and pressure working together at the same time. However, if you are working really slowly with the tilt brush, there can be this issue. As the pen changes direction, you can see there is this gap here. Yep, there is that gap there. And when the pen changes from left to right, you also see a gap there. 
that's if you work like really slowly if you are drawing really quickly or at moderate speed you can see um, no gap just that when you are slow there is the gap let me show you some line quality test so now i'm drawing with very minimal pressure and i can get this thin lines very easily so this pen it's quite sensitive the initial activation force is very light it seems that as long as the pen tip is touching the display i can get a line even if i don't apply any pressure so that's how sensitive the pen is which is great let me show you how the strokes taper and the lines they taper really nicely really gradually this is the transition from thin to thick we can get rather smooth transition this is great let's see if i can maintain consistent pressure to draw lines with consistent width let me make the line thicker okay this is great so i'm able to maintain consistent width very easily and now let's talk about the drawing experience and now let's talk about the drawing experience now this pen display at 21.5 inches is considered big so this is almost like a3 size which is a really nice size to work with and the surface this matte surface it's actually considered quite smooth but it does uh, provide texture for you to draw on i have tried pen displays with even rougher surfaces um, those are nice as well um, it's just a matter of preference what i like about this is when you're drawing the pen tip doesn't produce any squeaky sounds and you can have your palm uh, move on the display very easily without any friction if you're someone who sweats a lot then you can use the artist glove that's provided but um, personally for me i don't sweat that much so i like how my palm can move on the display very fluidly let me just zoom out yep i have to use my keyboard shortcuts with a proper keyboard because there are no physical shortcut buttons on the pen display i actually don't mind um, having or not having uh, physical shortcuts on the pen display i prefer to use my keyboard actually so this pen as mentioned earlier it's very sensitive you can draw thin and thick lines really easily this is how thick the line really is oops let me undo and this is how thin you can make the line without changing the brush size just by using the pressure this pen it's really sensitive as for the input lag um i mean when drawing at moderate speed like what i'm doing right now this is my usual speed when it comes to drawing um i don't see any issues with the input lag this pen display has been on for a few hours now and it doesn't produce much heat so you can probably draw on this for long periods of time without feeling well the heat this is the performance you can expect with most drawing software on mac and windows drawing performance is very predictable and consistent there are no surprises 
as long as you do not experience any glitches so the drawing performance overall it's really good one nice thing about having so much space to work with is it allows you to draw a bit more freely there is less um, restriction um, I mean if you know what I mean so let me just quickly color this vehicle oh okay I use white paint in the state of the eraser here while drawing I did not notice any uh, major glitches or minor glitches if you are using Windows um, the first place I would look for when it comes to troubleshooting would be Windows Ink but for Mac OS uh, drawing performance it's pretty good so the overall drawing process for me um, very smooth very uneventful which is nice and this is clip studio paint the drawing performance here is also fantastic all right to conclude let me just run through the pros and cons really quickly the design looks good it's a very clean and simple design but with no physical shortcut buttons on the side build quality is solid color support reasonably good we are looking at 99 to 100% sRGB color support at least from what I have measured and the brightness um, definitely adequate I'm actually using this at 70 to 80% brightness currently um, drawing performance is really good um, drawing performance is consistent it's predictable uh, no surprises I was able to get the lines to appear to come out just the way I want them to so overall drawing experience is fantastic the pen is very sensitive and the initial activation force is surprisingly lower than I expected downsides would be well the driver glitches or driver issues but thankfully um, those are issues they don't really affect drawing performance that much and also many of the issues I've mentioned have very simple workarounds and also other downsides um, tilt sensitivity sorry tilt sensitivity doesn't work near the edges but um, not really a big deal unless you are someone who draws near the edges and there's the issue with the tilt brush creating gaps depending on how you draw and um, overall cursor tracking is pretty accurate official retail price for this pen display at the time of this review is US $469 and this comes with 18 months of warranty just like many of XP pens products so uh, you can decide whether or not this is worth your money the pricing is very competitive compared to other brands this is something I can recommend very easily if you happen to be looking for a pen display a big one